careful when you're dealing with this DOT clock. Here I am, I'm in South Florida, I'm on my home time, I'm visiting my honey, I drove all night to get here. Welcome home, honey. <laughs> Thanks. I look at my tablet today and there's a message. You have been audited, you are in violation, you got a written warning. All right, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. We need to call the logs department, figure out what happened. This is a, looks like a 14 hour rule violation. Stick around and see what happens. My name's Kevin. I'm a solo OTR driver for Werner Enterprises. This channel is the joy of trucking. We're gonna, we're gonna include you for the phone call and see what you get out of this. And uh, afterwards, stick around. I'll show you on the, on the actual log what it looks like and try to explain what happened here. So if you get something out of this, give us the thumbs up and I'd love to hear your comments down below. See what your take on this is. Maybe you got your own story there. I'd love to hear because it's all a learning experience. Can I have your name and employee number? Hi, this is Kevin Sloan. My number is 1006417. How can I help you? I don't know if you can see my uh, profile there or whatever. I just got a message last night saying I'm in violation and I got a written warning. So I'm trying to understand, first I'm trying to understand the message and I'd like you to explain how, how it happened. In the message, it lists like 11 hour, 14 hour, 70 hour, all that stuff. But there's an X next to 14 hour rule. Is that the one that I violated or? Yeah, let me go pull up your messages real quick. They're mm -hmm. just trying to download. Let's see, okay, let's go pull up your logs. Was your truck um, in the shop that day or anything? Yeah, that's, that's what happened. The day started at seven o'clock. They came and took the truck and took it in the shop. And then at, uh, I don't know, 9.30 or 10, they brought it back out. And then I saw that it had gone into driving when the guy took it into the shop. So I called logs about quarter after 10. And I said, how did, you know, it went into driving. That means I'm on duty, but I wasn't on duty yet. So they told me to go for the time between the two drivings, I could I could change that from on duty to off duty, but I was told I couldn't change the driving. And it was like 20 seconds of driving from the yeah. parking lot into the into the shop. It's ridiculous that that put me on duty. But I went, I didn't just go off duty. I went like end of shift off duty at that point. So I thought it would at least split the clock. So I should have been, I should have still been good for like 14 hours minus those 20 seconds, you know? But what you did when you were done for the day is you went off duty instead of sleep or birth. So when you were done yesterday, um, you went into off duty instead of sleep or birth. Because when you do a split, um, you have to spend a minimum of seven hours in the sleep or birth. Well, the problem with that is I was I was driving because I had uh, finished my load, and then I was going to home time, so I had to go on personal conveyance. You can't do that from sleeper. Right. So that's what violated your clock. Is it is. Basically, it was a split break that was done incorrectly because you couldn't have gone to sleep or birth. Um, you would have had to shut down when it gave you warnings um, to go into off duty if you weren't going to do a, a sleep or birth. So how was I supposed to get home? You would have had to wait until you got clock back. Like if you were going to do a split break or do a regular ten hour break in off duty. Yeah, so I would I would have had to just park for what three hours or something like that or or. I would have been a minimum of seven in the sleep of earth. I would have been seven hours and then and then start driving home. <laughs> right. Um, and what, you know, usually when there's, when there's a split like that, at the end of the 14 hours, the normal 14 hours, it says your, your time is up. You have to, you have to stop and take a break, but because you split, you just keep going. And then it, yeah, it, you should have gotten a 60, a 30, and a 15 minute warning signaling the end of your original clock. Yeah, I did. And I just kept going. So if, uh, if the split worked, I could have just kept going for another six hours. Right, but you would have had to gone into sleep for birth when you were done. Right. This is all so confusing. <laughs> yeah, the split breaks the most confusing thing that anybody could do mm -hmm. um, because the DOT says that if you're in the sleep or birth, um, you're sleeping, even though we, we all know that may or may not be true. Um, but that's what they have to, they have to show that minimum of seven hours in the sleep or birth that you are resting. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I, I could have got home without taking a seven hour in the sleeper. And then, right. and then 
gone to personal conveyance. Right. That's what you would have had to have done to complete the split break correctly. Okay. There's nothing okay. we can we, we can do about changing this now? Like, it's it's done, right? Yeah, it's done, but this is just a written warning. Um, so you get two written warnings, and they don't affect you negatively in any way. Do I get a copy of the written warning? Like, it's it's got to be in my file or someplace that I could get it printed uh, so out? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure somebody could fly a printed out, like a terminal or something. Um because it, it goes on your, it goes to your driver file itself. Right. Um, I'm just not sure if it would have to be like a safety specialist, like a terminal or like a safety person as you're like on a dedicated account. Yeah, so next time I'm at a terminal, I'll go to the safety department and ask them if, if I can see this written warning. Yeah. And there's nowhere I can see it now. I can't access that. No, because it's, it's in our personnel files. Mm hmm All right. All right. Yeah, I think I understand what happened. Well, thank you for explaining all that, and uh, appreciate your time. You have a good day. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, so what got me in the beginning was when when the mechanic came and took the truck and drove it into the shop, the, the hours of service switched to driving because he took it over five miles an hour. I'd been sitting there for 48 hours and on, I was on sleeper. I should have been off duty. That's it. So, so somehow there's a violation if you're on sleeper for too long, like if you're home for your two days or three days or whatever, you don't do it on sleeper. You do it on off duty. So when he drove, because I wasn't off duty, it kicked into driving. And then when he took it out of the shop, it went to driving again. So even though I corrected the time between to say that I wasn't on duty between those two little 20 second rides, I was off duty. And immediately after he gave the truck back to me, I switched to off duty, finish shift so that it would at least stop counting the 14 hour clock or the, even the 70 because I didn't have a load yet. I sat there for another six hours waiting for my load that day all off duty. I did not start my shift again or anything until I had that load and I was ready to go. But the 14 hour clock kept counting. And because I was off for those six hours, it split the clock. And so at the end of the 14 hours, after it had seen that little driving 20 seconds, that's when it started saying, you're going to be in violation. You know, you got 60 minutes to find a place. You got 30 minutes, you got 15 minutes. And then I kept going because I know when you split it, it does that after the normal 14 hours. But I kept going because I knew I had a pretty good idea it was going to split. So what happened is I should have just kept going. But what I did was the next time I stopped, I went off duty so that I could go over to personal conveyance. And that's the problem, she says. What I should have done when I stopped, I think I stopped for fuel or something. Yeah, I stopped for fuel. And then I was going to go all the rest of the way home, which is still a few more hours away. And I said to myself, I should do this on personal conveyance. So I went off duty, switched to personal conveyance and kept driving. And that was the thing that got me in trouble. When I fueled up and went off duty, I should have gone to sleeper to finish the split of the 14 hour clock. And sleeper, you had to be at least seven hours in that sleeper. But I didn't want to do that because then I couldn't go on personal conveyance to drive home. I would have had to sit for seven hours on sleeper, take a nap or something, and then drive the rest of the way home. That would have got me home seven hours later. So next time, first mistake, when you're shut down, when you're, when you're shut down, you got to be off duty, not in sleeper if it's for an extended period of time. Second mistake, if I knew the clock split, I should have just kept going instead of going to off duty to get into personal conveyance. If I'd kept going, I would have made it home using the rest of the 14 hour split that had recommenced after my six and six hours off in the afternoon. So there's two things. And what I got now is a written warning, which is in my personnel file. And she was saying that's, that's not a big deal uh, to get one, but when you get two, then they kind of call you in and have the talk with you. So. I'm still good for now, as long as I be careful and don't make any more dumb mistakes. All right, this is my ELD. 
This is an electronic representation of your paper log. So this, everything on this line is off duty. Everything on this line is the sleeper. And this is your driving and on duty doing other work besides driving everything down here. So if you look, uh, I was off duty and then the mechanic took the truck into the shop right here and then it continued and then he took the truck out of the shop and gave it back to me. And right about here, I looked at it and said, oh my God, my 14 hour clock is, run is running down. So when you go to this screen, this shows your different clocks. And this, the 14 hour clock had already lost almost three hours. So what I did was call the logs department and they said, okay, your first mistake was you should have been off duty. Actually, I was in sleeper here. That's why it tripped into driving on duty. And then in between his two little rides, while it was in the shop, this showed on duty down, down here in the bottom, on duty. So the first thing I did while the person was on the phone was I went to my, went to my logs and I found the spot where First of all, uh, first of all, I had to go off duty. So I had to go here and go off duty and then end of shift. And then I got to go back to this screen and find the point where it had gone on duty. And she told me I couldn't change when the guy drove the truck into the shop. I couldn't take it off driving, but while it was in the shop, I could switch from on duty and make that an off duty. So you, you just pick the thing and then you can choose another one in the box. And then it asks you to save the new setting and then it will show it as being modified. So what happens then is you get the same little box that represents where you were on there, but it'll have the letter M showing that you've made a change or a modification to the status, right? there you see that M so that's when I changed it see that's when he drove in the shop and that's when he drove out of the shop and I changed the time in between to show that I wasn't on duty and here's where I went I ended my shift and went off duty so I could make these changes and affect them you don't want to make these changes on your own you need to call the logs department you got a phone number for them on your little employee card and you have to have permission to do this. You, you, you drivers can't just go in and make changes to their logs whenever they feel like it. <laughs> they could get in a lot of trouble for that. But if you have somebody on the phone with you from logs, they're looking at this screen too on their computer and they can tell you, okay, you can do this or you can't do that. And when you, know, when you start messing around with stuff, it has to be authorized. But the sad thing is after that, the 14 hour clock kept counting down, even though for the next five and a half, six hours, I was off duty waiting for a load. And then I finally started my shift and carried on with delivering my load that night. The 14 hour clock did not restart when I restarted my shift. It still counted that previous time. So it treated the time that I was off for six hours during the day as splitting the clock. So all this time here, see he took it out of the shop and then I was down all this time right here. It just treated that as a split. So then after I got my load and delivered the load and drove away, I should have completed the split here. Let's say right about here, I stopped for fuel. And then I thought to myself, well, if it's telling me that I'm out of time, I'll just go off duty and continue on personal conveyance and drive home on personal conveyance. So what we found from our phone call was I should have either gone into sleeper here to finish the split that I started here, or I could have continued just driving and staying on duty and gone home. As long as I didn't run out, run out the 11 hours of driving time. See, I was already at seven hours right here. So first mistake should have been off duty, not on sleeper, right? Second mistake, when the clock, when it told me your 14 hours is up, uh, I should have realized that I could have split the clock, I could have kept going. These hours that I was off duty all afternoon would have been added on at the end and I could have kept using them to complete my actual 14 hours. So 
that's it. Well, that was quite an, uh, quite an adventure. Uh, listen, I hope you got something from this. I hope you new drivers can, can see that it's, it's very complicated. Be careful when you're dealing with this, this uh, DOT clock. And uh, yeah, when you're, when you're off for a while, go off duty. Don't just go on sleeper if it's gonna be more than 10 hours. So if you get something out of this, give us the thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you've had a similar situation or what kind of fun and games you've had with this DOT clock. It's a learning experience and I'd really appreciate your input. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you down the road. Bye for now.